Why, good afternoon, Miss Mother here. All of a sudden, our weather has changed. Excuse me. Our weather has changed. We had a whole, oh my gosh, long shot spell of temperatures in the 80s. Yesterday it was 86 degrees. Today it's 69. Ooh. But the water is pretty warm. Otto, it's too cold for Otto to come outside. She's such a pussy. She's in doing her dishes now. Thank goodness she got to work. Oh, this is good. There. All's right with the world. God, it's taken me until 3.30. <laughs> to have my first drink of the day. It'll be the only one I can't have much more than one drink or I'll fall right on my face. Um, that's, that's part of being old, by the way. In the good old days, take my motorcycle down to the bar and drink scotch all night. One after another, after another, after another, after another, and dance by the glass off. And what happened? Nothing. N nothing. I'm sure I had a humongous uh, alcohol level. And then I'd get that bar closed, jump on my motorcycle, and drove the 20 miles home. I'll tell you, it's just crazy what we did in those days. I drove that motorcycle on the interstate in the winter over bridges that were frozen, darling. You know, bridges freeze, and this little sign, bridges freeze sooner than the roads. Well, that is the truth because they've got air on all side of them and they're usually the base is metal and so it attracts the cold air. Unbelievable, unbelievable what stupidity I had then. What stupidity and what balls I had then to do such stupid, stupid things. Um, I'm very happy today. My neighbor Donnie, D Danielle, Miss Steebly Weebly's wife called me while I was taking my nap, so. I awoke in only to return his call. She's fine. She got her first shot today. And so I have to worry and Steve Lee Weevily has to worry less about her biting the bullet. Gosh, I worry about people. I really do. Um, especially when you have good neighbors like that, you don't want to lose them. No, no, they've got to be good for something. Figure it out. <laughs> Just kidding. They throw excellent parties, by the way. Oh my God. And um, last year, at this time, Steve Weevely said that he was going to uh, to get ready for June. Because remember, the, the Donalds told us that it's not going to be here by Easter. Everyone's going to be fine. He's fine. The rest of the country's fine. Throw some bleach in your veins and everyone's going to be happy. So, <laughs> so Steve Lee Weevely believed the big lie. And... Um, out of hope and desperation. And uh, even I fell into it. I said, well, I'm going to be prepared for this party. I am dying for a luau, a tropical South Pacific luau. I love luau's, by the way. Oh, God. Can I make a pig? Oh, I can make a pig. I can be a pig. Yeah. Yeah, that's 
that's not too hard for me. So I bought a ukulele for Otto. And I said, here, bitch, learn how to play this thing. He has played the piano, uh, no, not the piano. That's moi. <laughs> he has played the guitar in the past. So he um, was going to, um, 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 what is this, um, um, um. So um, he's going to, he was going to learn the ukulele. Well, we have two stools sitting on the side of the piano where he could sit and when I play at night and he can have his scotch and we can play piano bar. Isn't that cute? Piano bar. It's piano bar time. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, um, and I keep on playing the same three songs, I know. And he's very happy. He loves to hear it. And sometimes I'll sing. And that'll put an end to the evening. But, um... No, I, I really, you know, if there's one person I admire in this world as an entertainer, as a person and everything, um, well, there's a couple people. Sophie Tucker is the one. I like Bessie Smith because she's blues, you know. Ooh, blues. And uh, Billie Holiday because she's blues and Ella blues. But Miss Sophie Tucker, mm -hmm. bad girl. I love that bad girl. Um, you know, anything that spits, bites, and has a nasty mouth. My kind of people. So, there's Miss Sophie Tucker from Hartford, Connecticut. And, um, she was. And she sang a couple of songs that I really like, but one of them was suited for Steve Weebly's, um, Pig Gross, Luau. And that is Waikiki. Da, 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 down in Waikiki. Down in Waikiki. Love that song. And I love to sing. And I come out here and I put the music on and I put on my Sophie Tucker album sometimes. Well, a lot. And I out here dancing around and singing. La, 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 like a hula girl. And I just love that song. Otto's still working on the dishes. There's, there's a kitchen window right there. <laughs> I could keep an eye on them. Um, there I go. I'm um, again. I gotta cut that out. I gotta get something that give me electric shock whenever I say um. Yep. Yeah. So oh, we got all this stuff together. The ukulele is still sitting right there on the piano where he opened it. He's taken it out twice, each time to tune it, and then it goes right on back. No, I think he, he played some chords um, along with, um, on the television, along with someone on YouTube. And that was very nice, but it's not gonna get me, it's not gonna get mother across the street to entertain the troops for a little while to sing the song by Miss. Sophie Tucker. I love bourbon. I forgot I love bourbon. God, I like I like ham with bourbon. Mm. And a molasses, an onion, and raisin uh, dressing. Oh, it's so good. And lots of bourbon, though. Did I mention you got to put lots of bourbon on it? Yes. Lots of bourbon. You can't live without bourbon. 
I have some recipes for bourbon cakes, too. They're very nice. They make you sugar and spice. A few years ago, the auto and moi got a little bit of a nudge, a travel nudge. So I said, okay. I love, we love Japanese art. And we both have studied Japanese, or, uh, well, Asian art, but mostly um, Japanese, a little bit of Chinese, some uh, Korean um, things. Yeah, that's about it, but lots of Japanese. I mean, Japanese painting, Japanese screens. I've made Japanese screens. We had a huge four-part Japanese screen over our bed before we moved down here. Um, it was very nice. Um, with um, gold leaf. Mother did a good job. Yes. Yeah. Very, very nice. We had huge tall ceilings, so it was, it was uh, beautiful. Oh, I miss it. No, I don't. I don't miss it. I don't miss the cold. I don't miss the snow. I don't miss the people who... You can't tell if they're real or not. Down here, if someone doesn't like you, they'll come right up in the middle of Walmart and say, You know what? You're an idiot. I don't like you, or you're a Yankee. I don't like you. Well, that's fine. See, at least you know where you stand with people. Hate is just one of those things that goes on in this country. Um, she st uh, she gave me a smile. Don't you love that? Doing the dishes with a smile. That's the kind of lover one must have. Does the laundry and does the dishes. So we went to Japan. Mother planned the whole thing as usual. Oh my God, I did a lot of planning for that because there's a lot of things we wanted to see. Um, and, and we're very, 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 very interested in Buddhist things, uh, Buddhist temples, um, whatever, because of our connections to Buddhism, Japanese Buddhism. Um, yeah. Nietzsche in Buddhism. Mm. So, we went. Now, we cannot, we cannot, never, 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 never. If we had to go on a jet, that, you know, one of those small things, especially out of here, out of Daytona, there's a lot of them because they only fly like from here to Charlotte or an American or from here to Atlanta for Delta and then you get connecting flights all over the place. But from here I don't think there are any oh, those are direct those are nonstop flights, right? But they're on little planes and they usually don't have a first class. No. Especially the American one. So um when, but we, when we go, and it's going to be more than, you know, you're going over an ocean or you're going down to South America or something, we want to be comfortable. So we've always gone business first or first. Now, on the plane, we took a plane, uh, uh, American, um, from Dallas. Well, getting to Dallas was fun. Uh, by way of Atlanta. And we went nonstop from Dallas to Tokyo um, Narita Airport, which is about seven continents away from downtown Tokyo. Good God, I thought we'd never get there. I, I thought the plane ride was long. Jesus, and it was. I mean, 
We were over Anchorage and I said, are we there yet? Are we there yet? I don't kept on saying, go to sleep, go to sleep. So anyhow, we have to have a pod so mother and that auto can sleep. We go with those down slide side beds. And I don't like to, I don't like to have other people smell me while I'm sleeping or listen to me. Because sometimes I can a snore, yes, and what it's happened. Or as I've told you before, sometimes I strike out, unfortunately, at my dear Otto. Not, but only out of love, to keep him in line, in the middle of my dreams. So yeah, so, so that's that's the way to travel. I mean, I don't like to be in the middle, especially three across, and get stuck in the middle. You know, you do that on a domestic flight, and that's bad enough. But I can sit for two and a half hours or three hours tops in one of those seats. So we get to Japan. And we had a wonderful time. Um, <laughs> before you go to Japan, let me describe a first class room to you. If you're in one of the cities, keep in mind that there are high rises, but they're multi use, that they have a whole different kind of um, zoning, architectural zoning, a uh, use zonage that we have here in America. So they have multi-use buildings. I mean, you can have a 70-story building and have it, uh, the 24th through the 30th floors, theaters. <laughs> You could have restaurants on the first floor, second floor, 70th floor, 22nd floor, you know, anywhere they want. They, they, just, they just do it. In an office building, you'd think, well, you're not going to go into an office building and find restaurants, but oh, yes, you will. With the view, because they're, some of them are all over the building. It's very, it's really unique. Well, it's unique for us. Um, so the first thing you should know is that hotel rooms, you pay top, top dollar and um, for a deluxe room with a view. And thank God we did because I can't imagine a regular room. And they are tiny. There's a bed pushed against a window. <laughs> Your room is about eight by eight, if that. You get out of bed and there's only two and a half feet before you can sit on the chair to put on your shoes. The only chair in the room. The uh, television is always so placed so people can watch dirty movies at night. They love pornography there. The oh, little devils, I love them. Uh, nasty pornography. <laughs> it was enough to make mother, well, blink. And then, as big as the room is, the living area is the bathroom. And the freaking bathroom is eight by eight as well. And that's just for the bathtub, shower, and a sink. Now the toilet's separate in a separate little room. Not a, I wouldn't call it a room, a closet, the WC. Yes, but it's an all-purpose. Clean your bottom, everything comes out automatic. Warm water, cold water fast spurt little I mean you don't need any um, you don't need to wipe anything your thing your tushy's all immaculate when you leave that place 
They even have a little dryer. Yes. Instead of, you know, you're always under the dryer. Well, this time the dryer is under you. So it's a tiny little room for two people. It was especially Americans, you know, American sized people. It was a little cramped. Um, Otto and I had to get to know each other all over in different ways than, than we had. But it was, but it was doable. It was bearable. It was, it was funny. It made for some challenges, which were always nice. One thing that I forgot to tell you about our hotel in Tokyo. Our hotel in Tokyo was on the twenty-second floor. We started on the twenty-second floor of a high rise and went up to the. I think the hotel part of it went up to the 40th floor. Very big hotel. But the lobby was on the 20 something floor. And again, there were movies down in the middle there and restaurants and all stores and things. And um, <laughs> our hotel, we were walking down from the train station to the hotel. And there's a long street that goes down in the Shinjiku. And all of a sudden, we heard this come rumbling down the street. And the people all looked up. And there was this huge Godzilla head in paw coming like this off of the building. <laughs> Oh my god, it was like two, almost three stories high. So, when we got into the hotel, we found, that was our hotel. <laughs> when we got into the hotel, it was, it, it was a, um, an hom homage to Godzilla. <laughs> and off of the main lobby, there was a cafe and things. And then outside, there was a, a large plaza built on the 22nd floor. And on that plaza was the Godzilla, the head and the arm. And people were going out there and he was going, oh. Well, every hour on the hour, the Godzilla would come to life <laughs> with lights and action. And oh, it was just bizarre. It was the funniest thing. It was, it was just so surreal. Well, our room, we got our room. Our room was right above <laughs> the freaking Godzilla. I guess they thought if you're gonna get a deluxe room with a view that you were gonna get the full effect of the Godzilla. Oy vey. Try to sleep through that. Now, we people who don't stay up late at all, I mean, we just can't. It's just impossible. You know, eight, nine o'clock, 10 o'clock. 10.15 if it's New Year's Eve. So, that was that for Tokyo. But, um, we went on to Kyoto. Now, Otto and I are sushi lovers. Well, I, I can't eat much sushi because of the rice. I shouldn't have rice. But, he loves his sushi, and so do I. And I eat sashimi, which I love sashimi. Well, we went to, in Kyoto, we stopped at a, we were out, we stopped at a, a specialized sushi place, restaurant. We went downstairs and on the counter and going all the way around was a little train that brought you your food on a platform that moved on the on the train. Conveyor belt. A what? Conveyor belt. A convey no, that was a train. Okay. That wasn't a conveyor That's right. belt. That's right. They it was an actual train on a track. Usually most of them have a conveyor belt, but this one had a train that came around. It was a Lionel, you know. Well, we started eating and it was very good and we thought the prices were incredibly inexpensive really um 
And and so we were eating and eating and eating, and all of a sudden we got. He kept on saying, "You you want this or do you want that?" Oh, sure, sure, sure. So he along on this train on the back of the train was this poor animal, a fish that was alive. We took the plate off, put it on the table. These people have no consideration for life. Well, as if we didn't find that out in World War II. <laughs> Here was this fish. Yes. After it had been skinned, after the meat was taken off. Huh? The meat was already taken off the fish. I'm getting there. Oh. This thing was breathing, gasping to take in air. Did I gasp right? Was the gasp good? Oh. It looked just like it. Thank you. And all the meat was carved away. The only thing keeping this little sucker going was his spinal column, I'm sure, because he was all cleaned out, gutted and everything. How the hell did they keep him alive, suffering like that? Well, I'm sure he didn't feel anything. Who knows? So I said to Otto, now hurry up and eat this thing so it doesn't suffer any longer. It, <laughs> we ate the whole thing. And he was still alive. It was awful. We were laughing like crazy. It was the silliest thing in the world. I don't want to say sound cruel, but it was just, it was bizarre. It's one of those things that doesn't happen in America, even at sushi restaurants. So that, that was interesting. But our trip was, was nice. Um, I don't know why I decided we were going to go to Hiroshima. God. As if we didn't have enough guilt already. I mean, how do you go into a city like that and think that you're going to walk around with America on your forehead tattooed? But we saw some other stuff while we were there. And it was just, it was lovely. The last thing I want to tell you about is we get off of the bullet train in this one town where we were going to a special shrine, uh, the head of our sect of Buddhism, Fujiguruji. So we're at this town and we were going to go to the Peace Pagoda up on the hill where he's buried. We got out of the train station and there were people sitting on either side of this little pool at the train station with their legs, uh, with their shoes off and their feet plunged into a, um, a hot pool that, and the, and the heat came up from the earth because there's a lot of volcanic activity there. We said, what the hell is this? Either it is the most civilized thing or it's the most batshit crazy thing we've ever seen in the world. But um, that was interesting, yes. But our trip, our trip was fun. Um, I'll have to show you a picture of a sculpture sometime that we saw and get your take on it. Um, but maybe I'll put it in after this video. Yeah, I'll end on that note. Tell me what you think of this sculpture. And um, you have a nice day. I'm going to finish my bourbon and go in where it's a little warmer. Love you all. Come again. This is Mother. Out.